Hey guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I wanted to jump on here today and share with you some of the happenings here in the wilderness as of the last two weeks and to talk to you about the importance of medical preparedness, no matter where you're located. Um, we are located 100% off grid in the wilds of Idaho and we are gated in by the state of Idaho. So medical emergencies are tricky here. Uh, people can't get to us quickly and without our assistance. And um, because we live in such a vast and um, small, vast area and a small town, um, another option we have is something called MediFlight, which enables us to call and have a helicopter sent to our location. And that I put into place five years ago when the mountain man um, fell off a ladder he was uh, he had just finished the roof just finished he unsecured the ladder because he had taken all the face boards off the roof and was finished and the ladder started to go so he jumped actually um, being the professional bull rider for 11 years he has learned to gracefully fall if you will and uh, Thankfully, nothing had happened there. He has a little bit of nerve damage on the bottom of his heel um, because most of his pressure um, from the fall, uh, the impact was on his heel. So other than that, he didn't break anything or injure anything, um, but it was scary, just the same. And had he not been conscious, you know, in that situation, things would have been very different. So that was what had instilled in me to get uh, a membership with MediFlight. And since then, I've always been playing through my head um, what I would do if something else were to happen, you know, how I would handle things. During our build, we had a bag phone um, that bounced off repeaters on the mountain, and it was shared with the loggers. Uh, the industry out here is logging. So it's not a very reliable source, and it wasn't a very clear connection. Um, and it just so happened that the day he fell off the ladder, or jumped off the ladder, uh, we were able to take him to the emergency room ourselves. However, now we are in our home. We have high-speed internet, thankfully, uh, thanks to a young entrepreneur who put a tower up on a mountainside adjacent our eaves. We started out with HughesNet internet, and occasionally ours is just as sketchy it, we have some struggles I think the tower is a little overloaded and we tend to have some struggles I was trying to do this video live today and it didn't work and uh, our phones are through the internet because we do not have a landline we do not have power out here other than our solar power so I have had in my head a protocol of what I would do we've discussed it as a family and that's what I want to talk to you about today it's really important to have protocols in place but also to talk about things and discuss things as a family your children need to be on the ball too and know what to do in the event something would happen to um, you you know um, our son is high functioning autistic as many of you know so Sometimes his response time and his reaction to things isn't what um, they should be sometimes. But um, through maturity, um, when when Glenn had fallen off the roof, um, the mountain boy just stood there. He didn't know what to do. Um, he, he was just frozen. This time, though, he was very active and very involved in things. And I think, too, that the comfort comes from kind of knowing what we're going to do. And that's why it's really important. Now, um, things did not go smoothly uh, because of our internet. I was not able to get out, and it wasn't part necessarily to uh, you know our internet entirely. I dialed nine one one; it wouldn't go through. I also dialed the sheriff's office, and it would not ring through, telling me the number had been disconnected, which I know I had the right number, and it has done that to me to other local numbers. So, that is a local phone line issue. So, you know, sometimes you need to have things in place if you can't get through and other means of connecting. And that's exactly, I just continued down my list. So I called our friend John and told him that we needed an ambulance. And he uh, got an ambulance heading our direction. However, um, on the scanner, um, they mentioned that they did not have enough information. 911 did not have enough information to continue on to us. They needed more details. Well, one of my friends heard that and started Facebook messaging me. So through technology, we were able to communicate and get everything 
communicated that we needed to and get the help that we needed in a timely fashion. Um, the gate needed to be open, so the mountain boy ran out with the car and opened up the gate and, and enabled them a means of getting through to us. And um, let me just um, share with you the details of the night because I really feel that we need to be proactive and that we need to have protocols in place. Now, to be honest, God orchestrated things that night because had things gone any different and, and as they would have normally gone, I would have been a widow on Thursday. Um, normally the mountain man goes to bed and I'm a few minutes following behind him. And had that been the case that night, he would have been dead. He, I was in the bedroom ahead of him and he struggles to get good sleep. So he took an over the counter sleep pill, but he chewed it. It wasn't a chewable, and I don't advise that because pills that are made to be swallowed need to um, go through your system and and start uh, becoming active in your stomach, not in your mouth. And what happened is by him chewing that pill, it caused it to go into his bloodstream a lot faster. And um, he, he chewed the pill. He went out of the bedroom, filled up his water container, came back in, shut off the light, and laid down. Now, normally, we talk for a little while with the light on, so the fact that he turned out the light was kind of a clue to me that something was up, maybe, you know, just was a little odd. So he laid down, and I started talking to him a little bit, and he wasn't really responding to me, and he said something to the effect of, I asked if he was okay, and he said something to the effect of, oh, I'm all right, and he said, I love you. It just seemed really spacey and really out of character for him. Not that he wouldn't tell me either of those things, but just in the tone and the way he did it, it was just really bizarre. So I asked him another question and he didn't answer me. And when he didn't answer me, I shook him because it just seemed weird. And normally under normal circumstances, he would have been like, what the heck are you doing to me? You know, no response at all. So I jumped up, I turned on the light, and his pupils were huge. So being that his pupils were dilated, I knew something was up, and I figured it was the pill. So thankfully, I, I have a dear friend, Rhonda, from thefarmerslamp.com staying here with me. She and her husband are in staying in our guest cabin, and she was a nurse for 26 years. So it was a great benefit to have the extra set of hands because I was no longer communicating with people on a phone. I was having to text message and also keep him awake. So, you know, when she came up, he was still kind of in and out, but, and he was still communicating a little bit. As a matter of fact, he didn't want the mountain boy to go open the gate because he was afraid he would rush and hurt himself, you know. But shortly after that, we lost him being able to communicate with us. We were holding his eyes open, you know, shaking him to keep him breathing. And, and all of a sudden, he would just stop. And he was holding his, it was like he was holding his breath. And we'd shake him good. And all of a sudden, he'd just go, <gasps> to take in that next breath. And so it was not a pleasant thing and it's not something that I ever wish to relive and I don't wish it on anybody. But I do want you to be aware that it is important to have protocols in place. You know, so many people want to um, live like we do, but you got to think of these things. If you've got medical conditions and you are further out, you're going to need to have something in place. You're going to need to have friends that you can contact and alert. Um, you know, we are back here all by ourselves. So there wasn't neighbors that I could call. Had Ron did not been here, I wouldn't have had that extra set of hands. And it was really helpful to me because she kept you know, shaking him and communicating with him as I was having to type, you know, so it was important. And I encourage you to sit down and talk to your children, have a list of phone numbers next to the phone of who you call, who you call for what, you know, and, and, and to go down the list if things aren't working. And if the phone numbers don't work, what's next? You know, had I not gotten through to anybody or our internet was down, because sometimes the tower goes down, it's, it's unusual, but it does happen on occasion. And it's really important to have a backup plan. Had we not been able to get him, you know, get in touch with somebody, I would have had to get him out of the bed, down the stairs, and in our vehicle, and motor into the hospital. So the other option was the helicopter, but if I couldn't have gotten through, those were my options. Now, 
there are some really great resources that I want to share with you today as well. Um, and the Mountain Man is fine. Um, it was a very rough evening. It took them till 3 a.m. That was uh, we called the ambulance at, at a little bit before 11, and we made it into the hospital by 11:20. So they moved. I was and I was indicating to them that they needed to move because he was not responding and no longer breathing. So, you know, we didn't get to the CPR level, but um, we were there. We were close, and. Um, it was it was just something to experience and it's really really important for you to stay calm during those experiences and I think when you have a protocol in place it helps keep you calm because you've already gone over it and over it you know what you're gonna do and I I really was not I was nerved up that he was not breathing and I was nerved up that he was not well but I was not nerved up with the process it just went boom 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 and I was very comfortable with that and very at peace with that, kind of almost numb to it because I think I've gone over it so many times in my head, you know, because he's, he's a crazy man. He does all kinds of very, um, dangerous things on a regular basis and has no fear. So, and, and I have that in me as well, so I get it, but he's got a lot more advanced needs than I do for that. So you know, it's just important, you know, to think ahead, especially when we're out here like this. We are in the middle of nowhere. If he's cut in the tree and there's a problem with how it falls, if he gets cut with a chainsaw, anything could happen. You know, I mean, just freak stuff happens. And this was a freak thing. And it's just really important to have those things in place and discuss them with your children. Have a protocol in place. Tell them who they need to call, what they need to do, and, and teach them to be calm. Because if they get excited and, and they freeze up, they are no use to you or or to themselves if they are in danger. So this is important things to discuss with your children and I hope you're sharing this video with them. In addition to that, there are some great resources that I want to share and um, this is a book that I am actually reviewing right now, The Survival Doctor's Complete Handbook. This is Dr. James Hubbard. I've had him on my radio show, The Mountain Woman Radio, and um, he is a wonderful wonderful resource he has been practicing medicine for over 30 years and now he has his book available which is a step-by-step -step and a really good book to have on hand in any type of emergency he covers all kinds of things in this book and you can quickly find this by going to treyerwilderness.com slash medical handbook okay and then in addition to that, Dr. Hubbard also has classes. They are online classes, but I have had the privilege of taking them, and they are very um, educational, very helpful, and I, as I am, we are always saying, knowledge is power. The more you know, the more beneficial you are to yourself and others. Even if it's not something you practice all the time, it's extremely important to have the knowledge in the back of your brain knowing that you know what to do in situations. So you can also check out his classes by going to treyerwilderness.com slash life course. And then also the second one is his master course. And you can do that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash master course. And I will have that in the description here so that you can find them and locate them. But educating yourself on certain medical situations and medical things, having medical supplies on hand. Now, in this situation, there wasn't really anything we could have done differently or had on hand. Um, in this situation, a key thing would have been to get him to vomit and also um, to keep him breathing. So it's just there are situations that you can interact in and there is certainly a place for modern medicine. Um, I'm very big in natural medicine and feel there are ways that we can help ourselves that way, but there definitely is a place for modern medicine and that happened to be one of them. And like I said, I don't wish this on anybody. It was not an experience I wish to relive. Uh, he was very beat up. Uh, his body was extremely stiff and sore. His muscles were sore. And, um, and he was given a lot of medication that night and, and they ended up having to put a tube down his throat and in order to do a CAT scan to verify that there wasn't any, uh, bleeding of the brain because of how fast that took pl place. So it's really important that 
and I can't express it enough that you have something in place and you discuss these things. Discuss whether there's a medical emergency emergency discuss if there's a fire emergency because like last year we had the struggles here with it being so dry and we had major wildfire threats so you know we had protocols in place for that too at one point we had the trailer backed up next to the house and we're ready to load it some of it was loaded and we had the vehicles in the direction heading out of the driveway so we didn't have to mess around trying to turn around a 24-foot gooseneck trailer and all of our gear we just loaded it and had it ready to roll because the fire was coming and you know we only had one way out so all those things and it's important to have things in place with your children too that if something happens when they're at school or outside of the house and you're separated what will you do where will you meet things like that it's important to have those things in place and teaching children survival skills and and these kind of skills and and just having things in place and discussed helps them in situations like say they're on a field trip at school and something happens you know the more knowledge they have, the more beneficial they will be to themselves. When my son is separated from me, I know, regardless if he is high-functioning autistic or not, that he can take care of himself. That's a security for me, as well as for him. And it's a good thing, it's a good comfort, it's a comforting feeling when you, when there are rough times. So I just wanted to share this with you today because it, it was a scary time and you know we've been dealing with my health issues and that's a whole other different ball game this was extreme an extreme emergency and um, I was again very proud how things had gone and how we handled things and how um, everybody came together like I said God orchestrated that because we had many friends that came together to pull that all off and so it's good to have a community and and friends that you can rely on and contact when you need them and um, when I called my friend to uh, get an, an ambulance out here he didn't skip a beat you know so it's just a good feeling to know that you can build a community of like-minded people and and be there for one another and that's an important aspect of this too so be prepared for these things you know don't just wait for them to happen and and thankfully they don't happen often but when they do being prepared is huge and it will make things so much easier and and so much less stressful and ensure a good outcome so if you're intending to live off the grid or uh, way out in the middle of nowhere, I encourage you to really consider, you know, medical needs and, and so forth. If you have medical problems, that is one thing that you want to be certain that you are going to be able to have access to and, and how you will do it. Whether it's a CB, whether it's the internet, whether it's Facebook Messenger, whether it's the phone or a neighbor, whatever, you know. Do consider these things and I encourage you to check out Dr. Hubbard's classes and his book. Again, the Survival Doctor's Complete Handbook is a huge asset to have in your uh, physical library. I encourage people to have physical books, not just ebooks, because if your eye jiggers decide to fail and, and you don't have a way to power them, you always have your paper books, these traditional books. I love holding a book in my hand and I like having the resources at my fingertips. So just something to consider. Thank you for your time today. I hope you guys are all well and we appreciate you greatly following us. So continue to check out the rest of our videos and be sure to visit our website at treyerwilderness.com and you can find Mountain Women Radio being aired. So I'm sorry, bi-monthly. So um, be sure to join us. Thank you for your patronage and to our next video. Be safe and God bless.